is Brett Stebbins. I'm a graphic designer slash artist slash 3D modeler. Um, I wanted to show you guys uh, how I created these green crystals in Affinity Designer. Affinity Designer is a vector-based program similar to Adobe Illustrator, but the tools and the processes um, are different and it makes it a lot more fun for artists as they create their illustrations. Um, it's a lot more organic and less technical, which I really like. Uh, so I'm going to turn off uh, this layer here and show you how I started making these. So this is where I started, creating all these different shapes, bringing them together to create individual crystals. Kind of the way I did that is I used the pen tool over here, and um, uh, I also uh, used uh, snapping, and uh, specifically snap to shape key points right here. And uh, what that allows me to do is as I select nodes on these shapes, I can snap them to other nodes on other shapes, which allows me to line these up. Okay, so um, then I added uh, gradients into each of these shapes. Uh, and I made them grayscale, which I'll uh, explain in a minute. So um, if I go under this layer and select these uh, crystals, and if, and I'm going to duplicate it. So you can either on, on the Mac, Command-J or uh, Command-C for copy and Command-V for paste. And then uh, and you can see under here, I'm going to turn off this group and holding down the command key I'm going to select these individual shapes. By holding down the command key I'm not selecting the group, I'm selecting all the shapes in the group, all the individual shapes. Then I'm going to combine them all together into a single shape or single curve. Then I'm going to fill this with white which I'll explain later. And by putting all those shapes together, it pulls them out of all these groups, and so now there's these empty groups I need to clean up here. And I need to ungroup this, and I want to ungroup this. Okay, now we have just our shape over here. So um, I'm going to turn that off and turn on the previous group. Okay, so I'm going to go up to this top layer here that both of these are inside of and I'm going to go to the effects layer effects panel so in here I start by selecting a color overlay turning that on and as you can see immediately I can um, adjust the colors so I could make it blue I could make it purple or pink. Um, I'm going to make it green. So I pick a green that I like and I have it on overlay. Sometimes um, I change this uh, depending on the color because uh, sometimes the effect is different for different colors. But right now um, have it on overlay. And then um, at this point I'll do an outer glow color because these crystals they glow. So we'll pick green and for the glow I like to make it just a little cooler so I'm not going to make it as much of a yellow green. And then um, I go back over here to this uh, shape where it's just a one single shape that I had combined together and I'm going to turn this layer to multiply so that that's why I made it white so that you can see right through it and then what I do is I'm going to first add an inner shadow because these are crystals you can kind of see into them although you can't see all the way through them so there will be other shadows and things that you might see inside the crystal. Um, 
So I'm going to increase the radius of this. You can kind of see it along the edges here. Um, sometimes, depending on, like I said, the color, I'll pick a different blend mode. Use the offset sum. Sometimes the intensity just depends. Make this slightly darker. So now you can see that you can almost, uh, as you look into the crystal, you can kind of see the base gets darker where the ground meets. Bring that effects panel back up. The other thing I like to add here is the bevel emboss or, and the 3D effect. So what I do is I kind of build on these things. And so there's some playing around with um, how this looks. So I'll increase the radius and the softness. So what I'm trying to do is when you, you know, crystals, they're, re they're refracting light from all different, you know, into all different directions and, and there's reflections. And, and so you want to create sort of a complexity of, of how that looks. So I'll increase the specular a little. Um, as you can see, as, as I, you can see these uh, shiny parts right in here. Oops, shiny parts. You can see if I decrease how they move out towards the edge. As I increase it, you can see it's moving in. And what that allows me to do is sort of make it look like a shiny kind of reflection off the crystals which would be hard to do with just a plain old gradient. Okay. Sometimes I'll bring the diffuse down because sometimes it gets too washed out. You see where it's too white in the lighter parts. So I'll kind of bring that down, play with the shininess too. Then after I got it where I want, then I'll um, go over to bevel and emboss. And this is also, I like to pick inner because I don't want anything on the outside of the crystals. I want all this to be on the inside. It's just another way to add another layer of, of um, effect to it to give it more complexity. So I'll play with um, these settings. And it, and it seems to be as I, I do different colors that sometimes plays out differently. Also with the highlight and the shadows, I turn the shadows off completely by um, dropping it to 0%. And then in the highlight, um, I like to put a green color. <clears throat> Maybe change it to a little bit more of a yellow green so that we have some very, so the colors sh are shifted slightly different within the crystals so it's not all kind of monoton you know monotone so as you can see if, if I turn this bevel emboss off you can kind of see the difference because a lot of times when you get to the edge of any object um, it's it's not dark it's um because as sort of like when a, a ball curves and you start to see the edge what you're seeing is more reflection as opposed to something that's facing you directly. Okay, now another thing I like to do because if I zoom in here and if I deselect these, um, see there's like a little white edge. I kind of like to get rid of that so Going back here, I'll add, it's hard to see it because when you select it, there's that blue outline. So I like to add an outline. To it, um, just like a, maybe a medium color and then bring this up just a little bit just to kind of take care of that. So now if I deselect it, you'll see that Instead of it being white, uh, it kind of um, covers that up. So you can just play with that to get it to where you want it. 
And now, um, now I'm going to do an outer shadow. So I kind of want these crystals to connect with the ground a little. So I could go and, and draw something, put it in there, but I sort of, if I'm using a, a dark ground like I am with, in this scene, uh, I can just use an outer shadow. So you can see how that changes it. So you might have to play with your glow. Actually, you know what, I might just put it down here. Because I have the outer glow on this top layer. So I'm probably going to just go under to the next, to, to the um, objects under it, and put it here. Um, that way it's kind of behind the glow. So in this outer shadow, you know, I'll play with uh, radius and offset. Change the angle here so it's going straight down. Um, sometimes what I'll do is I'll bring it all the way up so I can start so I can see it better. Offset helps me to kind of push it down. The radius. get it where I want it, a little bit more of the radius, a little bit less of the offset, then I'll start pulling the opacity um, down, and then I'll continue to mess with it some. So you want to look, make it look like it's just touching ground. So I may play more with that. Um, don't want to play with it too much. Just want to show you how, how I did it. You kind of get the idea there. So I'm going to go back to my overlay uh, color. And um, I was sort of playing with the different blend modes. So I like overlay, but I feel sometimes that it's a little too monotonous. Um, so sometimes I like to, to look at what the other colors or other uh, blend modes do to it. Um, so just depending on what you're wanting to get, like that would be a more cartoony feel. Um, I think overlay does work in general. But sometimes I'll do hard light to give it um, a little more intensity. Um, okay, so now, um, so there, there was still, I, I would still play with this to get it to where I want it, but this is close enough for what I'm trying to do here. So now I'm going to go to the ground glow. Um, so I already created this gradient, and what I did is I just made it a white gradient. Um, so basically it's, uh, white on both ends and one has opacity of 100% and one uh, opacity of zero and um, as you can see here going from the center out and then I'll also uh, do an effect on this color overlay this just makes it easy so if you make more crystals you can um, just easily change the color by, by moving sliders around. So I just put it all the way up, play with how, how blue-green or how yellow-green I want this. Um, and then also I had uh, played around the opacity here, so I could make it a lot more intense. A lot less intense, depending on how much light you want it to emit. Now, like I said, on this, I probably would play with some of these dark areas to make them not so dark and, and uh, continue to mess around with it. But you guys get the idea. I hope this is helpful, and uh, you should check out Affinity Designer.